Microsoft just keeps losing with AI. Like, why would I need Copilot to change my resolution? Does everything on GitHub have to be Copilot? An agentic OS, what is that? But Valve just keeps on winning. Steam OS, based, but it's really their contributions to open source that is the biggest W of them all. This is a story about how two companies have a very different approach to their customers. I wanted to start with Microsoft because it's just too easy to make fun of them. So this tweet right here really kicks everything off. Windows is evolving into an agentic OS, connecting devices, cloud, and AI to unlock intelligent productivity and secure work from anywhere. Now, none of us knows what that actually means, but Windows was nice enough to release this beautiful video on Twitter. Yes, the Windows Twitter account released this video right here. Grandma needs to make the text bigger. The text is just too small. Now you would think Copilot would just make this process easy. Open up the thing to change your resolution and then perhaps make a good valid recommendation. So we can just ask Copilot, hey Copilot, you show me where to click to do that. All right, Judner, I've highlighted the display option for you. Click there to adjust text size and other display settings. Can you show me what to click next? I've highlighted the scale setting for you. Click there to change the size of text, apps, and other items. What percentage should I click? Let's start by selecting 150%, which is the recommended side. There's a couple things that happened there. First, you had to ask multiple questions to actually get to the settings. But second, I think the more incredible part is that it kind of prompt injected itself. Notice that the original question was, I want to make text bigger. How do I do this? And what does the AI respond with? Well, why don't you use 150%? It's recommended. That's because the actual list item says recommended and AIs just prompt eject themselves. Like, I want to make this bigger. What should I select? Oh, you've currently selected the recommended. I would suggest the recommended because it's recommended. So I recommend the recommended to you because that'd be ridiculous to re recommend anything else. This adventure we're going into where everything is going to be AI is just going to have some of the more frustrating results of all time. And yes, be prepared for the incredible prompt injections that really is our future for an agentic OS. If this is what they even mean by an agentic OS. And of course, Reddit did not take too kindly to this whole idea of agentic OS. Well, I mean, to be fair, I don't think Reddit takes kindly to pretty much anything. What the F does that even mean? I f hate the word agentic. Logging into the admin side of 360 nowadays lands you on the Copilot prompt. Super annoying. Using the mobile version of what used to be Office, now stupidly called Microsoft 360 Copilot, leads you straight to a Copilot prompt. Like, I don't want the f***ing chat with your AI bot. I want to see a list of my recent documents. This is going to be the mantra of Microsoft for the next foreseeable future. In fact, they even just had a GitHub Universe. And what happened at GitHub Universe? I think Mitchell probably sums it up the best. Oh yeah, I thought. I wondered what GitHub announcements at Universe this year. Lamau, 20 out of 24 or 25 announcements contain the word co-pilot. Not one mentions of the word maintainer anywhere. The beatings continue. Uh, dog? Hey dog? Hey dog? Do you want the beatings to continue? Oh yes you do. Yes you do. Yes you do. You love the beatings. Did I name you co-pilot? Do you want to be named co-pilot? Do you want to be named co-pilot? Is that what you want? But the reality is that Microsoft right now has just continually leaned into AI, but has continually delivered a worse and worse experience for the end user. And this is because I'm convinced that Microsoft doesn't care about the end user. They care about B2B. This is where all their money's coming from anyways. So if they can sell larger and more expensive packages to B2B, then guess what? That's what they're going to aim to do. So more AI equals more usage of AI. More usage of AI, of course, is more ability to charge. So instead of having these one-time year charges, these subscription charges, you're going to have usage charge. Everything you do in Microsoft will be the continuous slow increase of a bill. Because at the end of the day, that's how you make stonks go up. Now, the other company, the one that I'm actually most excited to yap about, the one on the other side, of course, is Valve creating their Steam OS and, of course, their new Steam Cube, the Gabe Cube. Now, I'm not going to do some sort of hardware review. There's tons of videos you can go check out. Valve blew my mind. I love it. Mwah. This is actually what I want to look at right here. Valve is paying 100 plus open source developers to work on Linux based technologies. Now this feels like the opposite of Microsoft. 
instead of creating a walled-in garden that's even more walled-in through the obfuscation of AI and barely working user experience. Instead, you have this very robust experience that's making the world an actual better place by investing into open source. The thing that makes this most impressive is that the rapid improvement of Linux and Proton is actually making Linux into a viable competitor to Windows. And that's because Valve recognized a fundamental truth. You can't ask developers to create both for Windows and Linux. Instead, hey, create for Windows. We will maintain the bridge that makes it transparent for you. And we will do the heavy lifting to make this work on Linux. And their contributions are actually quite wide within the Linux community. This article doesn't do justice to how much Valve contributes up and down the Linux desktop stack. From low-level plumbing like the Linux kernel, graphic drivers, Vulkan, and up to high-level items like the KDE desktop environment. The Linux desktop and gaming of today wouldn't be anywhere as mature without Valve. Agreed 100%. In one of my previous videos, Apple introduces the year of the Linux desktop. I go over this thing where Windows actually just publicly states that it believes its users are too stupid to be able to use their product and that they have to make it even more enclosed and even more restricted. But the thing that makes me just love Valve more and more is the fact that they don't think that about you. Look at this. I love this. Software-wise, Steam Machine will, of course, run SteamOS, the custom Linux-based operating system. It also means the ability to boot to Linux desktop mode. That means they trust you enough to just give you the full access. Wow, you're treating me like an adult. It actually feels good to be treated like an adult. That means I can access my system the way I want to. It does not have to be a locked down garden. I can install the things I want. I could put NeoVim and use my little Steam GameCube as my new NeoVim editing environment. But something even more surprising, you can also install Windows with the help of drivers available on the Valve's website. That means they're even supporting not their own native platform. They're like, hey, we recognize that Proton's not gonna solve all your Windows needs. And if you need Windows, we support Windows. And this is why I think Steam's just gonna keep on winning. They actually care about me, their customer. Or maybe a better way to say this is that Microsoft enjoys getting the value from their customers, whereas Valve enjoys delivering value to their customers. In the end, Valve is not gonna make as much money as Microsoft, but they do make happier customers. And maybe that's just a better approach, having a very resilient business that people want to give money to instead of begrudgingly hating year after year, every single feature being developed and distributed to your customers. Because at the end of the day, Valve is going to deliver value and Microsoft is going to deliver ads. And more importantly, Valve literally puts their money where their mouth is and they contribute a ton to open source. Hey, like this video. No, really, it's a good video. Press like and also subscribe. Come on, I'm almost to a million. Come on, just do it for like, do it in the Christmas spirit, okay? Just give it to me. Hey, the name is the Primogen. Hey, is that HTTP? Get that out of here. That's not how we order coffee. We order coffee via SSH, terminal.shop. Yeah, you want a real experience? You want real coffee? You want awesome subscriptions so you never have to remember again? Oh, you want exclusive blends with exclusive coffee and exclusive content? Then check out Cron. You don't know what SSH is? Well, maybe the coffee's not for you. Terminal coffee in hand living.